Hello and welcome to another Fatal Encounter Emergence of Talents update video. I made one back in April which went over a lot of our changes before we went into principal photography. Now if you haven't seen that one quite yet, I'd highly recommend you give that video a watch over on our channel. Now if you already watched that one and now you're over here, welcome back. If you haven't watched that one and now you're here, welcome anyways. My name is Patrick Farley. I am the director, writer, and producer, and I also act in the Fatal Encounter Emergence of Talents movie. It's been a dream movie of mine to have a film like this made for many, many years, within the last decade that I, since I've started filmmaking, I should say, and it's been a quite the journey. So in the month of May, as we were heading into production, at least heavily into production, I decided to fly in a few actors, uh, Gino, Aaron and Nick, and they all flew down here from all around the country just to be a part of this movie. I rented out a mansion, I took a lot of us to Los Angeles, and it's been quite the journey. So I'm going to go over a lot more of that into some good detail without spoiling what the film is about and kind of what's going on towards a lot of, you know, important details of the story. Uh, when I flew everybody down here, our first day was more like a rest day. Everybody rested, we watched kind of the footage we already had that I had cut together, and they gave me their valuable feedback to it, and I took that in my mind and I decided to go forward 100% of the way. Uh, once the first filming day came around, what did we do on the first filming day? <laughs> it's been a minute, been quite a lot of editing. Oh yes, I remember now. So. The first filming day was more a lot of green screen footage. I had Gino and Aaron in front of the green screen, starting with, um, well, I went back and forth with both of those two, and Aaron played more of the news reporter that I needed, and Gino just playing the evil dictator type of role for this organizational character. He is the leader, the supreme baddie of baddies, and I cannot be happy with how it looks just in front of a green screen. And I also can't wait to see how it looks like when it's completely edited. And after we did some green screen filming, promotional photos, uh, I took everybody down to a conference room. And I don't really have a lot of behind the scenes of the conference room because I was more in directing mode instead of capturing behind the scenes stuff. But it was a lot of fun uh, watching everybody work around each other and having so many people in the room together, which for me is a lot when it comes to small independent films. And the conference room scene was pretty big. It's important to the story. Um, and afterwards, I took everybody back to the mansion that I was renting out. And we decided to film an improv bar scene that will take place towards uh, the end of the film. I unfortunately don't have any behind the scenes footage of that. So I'll just kind of put something else on screen for it. Um, but that doesn't give anything away. And that was day one. I made these guys work like a... 10 to 12 hour day and but you know we had poor to subs. it was a good day overall and it was quite challenging for all of us involved afterwards was more it was our first fighting day so we had to film a fight scene that took place from inside uh the cabin all the way to outside at the park which also corresponded with another fight scene that we filmed uh later last year uh late last year like in the summertime and so Putting all those pieces together, we started inside the cabin and we get to see the dynamics of Fennec and Alex coming together and what their relationship more or less is. And then also what happens when Zagan, the guy played by Gino Romo, comes in and goes, Hey, I'm going to fuck shit up. <laughs> and it was a lot of fun filming it. I Thankfully, I think I'm the only one who walked away with the most injuries. And think, and they're also, you know, within a couple weeks, you recovered from those pretty darn good. But so there, there was a, we, we went from inside the cabin and we went all the way into this courtyard area. And this one particular fall, fall I took, um, thankfully I only had to take it once for the shot we needed. Um, I was supposed to get a little bit of air so I can cartwheel into like a fighting stance, but instead I ended up bouncing off of the. I, I hit like this fire pit and then I bounced off the paver, which is like concrete. It's equally hard to fall on. Um, and then I rolled off of both of those things and into a fighting stance. 
And I, I would play the clip on screen. If I have something behind the scenes, I'll put that up here instead. But it did hurt a lot. And uh, that hurt my right hip for the rest of production. So if you ever like been in like a uh, martial arts or MMA, whenever you like had a, a, have an injury in the moment and you just have to keep going, that injury doesn't matter anymore. You just have to keep going. Your body's in like fight or flight mode. So if I let like that right hip uh, injury that I took from falling onto the fire pit and paver, there's no way we've been able to do any other fight scenes the rest of the time because I'd be too busy babying it. Instead, thankfully, Nick Messersmith's like, hey man, have you heard of Tiger Bomb before? And I'm like, what's that? Is that like Icy Hot? And he goes, yeah, on steroids. So we bought like the thing of Tiger Balm <laughs> and he wasn't kidding. You slap, you rub some of that on you and it's like having Icy Hot on, but it makes you feel better. It still has like that menthol smell to it, but it does help a lot when it comes to needing to get over some quick pain and keep going. Yeah, it does the trick. Um, after we got down in the courtyard, we went over to this park area and it's like by the riverbed. And this is one of those scenes where I did have a lot of fun like riding it out, um, but when it came to actually filming it, it was a lot more, it was harder on my body than I thought it would be. And it's not that I regret filming it, I just was hoping it'd be a little easier <laughs> on myself than it actually was. But overall, all the footage turned out great. Day two was a lot of fun. We ended up getting pizza that night, so we, I kind of skipped trying to do portisubs twice in a row. It wasn't, wasn't anything super fancy, just kind of cheap pizza, fill our bellies and go to bed because we were exhausted. It was a really long day and we got a bit of a later start, mainly because of me. Because um, when I, I have to go through and read the scripts, and this is me learning that I see why there are a lot of people wearing different hats. Because I'm wearing three hats at this moment. I'm trying to focus on how do I want it to be as a director? How am I going to direct everybody into what I need to get done? As an actor, how am I going to play this character? What's my character going through? What's the emotions they are feeling? And how are they going to act their way between the beginning and end of this fight scene? Oh, and then as an editor, how is this going to be stitched together inside the, you know, from all the shots we have to where it's going to tell a coherent story, but also keep the action going and the adrenaline just all the way to the climax and then it'll finally drop down. I can see why there's a lot of different hats, because trying to wear multiple hats at the same time is its not easy and I wouldn't recommend it. Although, if you do do it, it's a lot of fun, it does save some money, and it's a lot of fun. <laughs> oh gosh, yeah, I don't know, don't watch this for advice, I'm just giving you guys an update video and I'm really happy that I'm filming this. Um, anyway, so day three, uh, which is more like day two for filming. So, oh no, no, yeah, it was day three of filming, I lied. So day three of filming, what did we do? Oh, okay, yeah, day three was a lot easier. Oh, thank goodness. So on the third day, oh, actually, no, it wasn't easier. How do I put this in here without spoiling anything? Let's see. So the aftermath of the fight scene we filmed the day before, in the story, um, something happens, and I have to play... Um, I'm playing a character who is being beaten relentlessly for information. I hope that's as vague as I can say without giving anything away. And it was the most emotionally taxing day for me. Like we set up my garage with like this black lining and we swept and it looked really cool and I got a film inside this garage. <sighs> I don't know, it's basically a torture room scene. and. I've filmed them before, but this was the first time that I had to be like in on a, in a chair playing someone who is getting um, beaten up for information. That's all I can say about that, but it became a very emotionally taxing day. And it was a really good experience. Like I cried, I got choked up, I was very emotional. I broke down. I It was the hardest day. And by the time we were done with everything, and it only took us like three to four hours to film everything tops. We were just on it the entire time. And even that's some of my favorite lighting from filming to this day. I was exhausted. 
mentally, emotionally, physically, I was done. And that was the only thing we filmed the entire day. And I thought it was going to be one of the easiest days to film. I don't know. It's not. <laughs> I definitely got my one-on-one in acting that day. And Gino and Nick, who were playing around me in the scene at the same time, did such a good job. I wish I could show you right now, but I can't. But trust me, when you see it one day, you're going to be like, damn. Damn. It looks that good. <laughs> Oh man, it's it makes me happy just looking back at it and thinking of how it looks like when I'm watching all the clips cut together too. So after that, we went and filmed the easy day. So we filmed the introduction for the film, and I got a lot of stuff going on with that day, but we filmed some stuff in the garage, some stuff outside. Uh, we filmed a couple shots for a flashback scene I needed with Gino, and that was basically our easy day. Now, why did I make it the easy day? Because we're going to go travel to Los Angeles the day after. And I had to wake up along with Gino and Mick at 3.30 in the morning to get our butts on the road so we can try to beat Los Angeles traffic. You know what my advice for you guys are is when you drive to Los Angeles? There is no beating Los Angeles traffic on the way in. Unless you're getting there at 4 in the morning. Because... Oh man, we left my house at about 4 o'clock in the morning, and we didn't get down there until closer to 1, 2 p.m. We made really good time. We only had a couple breaks, well, a few breaks, one involving a really big breakfast at a, a Denny's along the way, and it was good. And, but yeah, I just went, we got, right when we got to the edge of Los Angeles, it took us a whole other hour just to get to our hotel. And I decided to get a hotel right by the LAX airport. So um, Blake and Nick, who flew down there instead of driving, could just meet us at the hotel room and then we can walk around and grab dinner and go over the script and all that kind of stuff. So we traveled. And oh man, I don't know about you guys, but I love road trips, but that long road trip is very tiring. <laughs> And I could have rotated with like Gino or Mick at any time for the drive, but I'm like, nah, you guys are going to rest and I'm going to do all the driving. And I was exhausted <laughs> because the only thing I could think of when we got down to Los Angeles was what are we filming the next two days? And I want to know every cut, every sequence, every order of every little thing in every excruciating detail I could put my mind to. <sighs> well, I definitely got what I wished for because I everybody left a hotel room, minus Nick, Master Smith, and myself. And I can tell you guys, he's like a wizard in fight choreography. So we got two different fight scenes going on for the grand finale of the movie. I'm not going to tell you the results of these fights because you have to watch the movie yourself to find out when it's done. <laughs> so anyways, there's going to be a fight scene on a rooftop taking place downtown of Los Angeles. And then there's going to be a fight scene inside of a warehouse taking place downtown of Los Angeles. And they're happening at the same time. So all the characters migrate over to the warehouse, and then two of them leave to go over to the rooftop where Zagan's at, and then Nick and Mick are left by themselves, the characters they play, of course. Uh, we were all actually there. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so Nick and I went over all the fight sequences. Hey, Nick, this is how many cuts I want. Here's what I have in mind for the rooftop. I'm not sure how I should order my sequences until I know what you have in mind for the warehouse. Him and I wrote it all down, we went back and forth with it, I reordered mine, and then finally I got to exactly what I wanted to be at. It only took us about an hour and a half or two hours later. Then we went and grabbed dinner and it was perfect. Or maybe that was after dinner. Hmm, kind of a blur for a moment. But either way, we got all the stuff I needed to get done. Now, to the war- oh, actually no, not to the warehouse. To the rooftop! And we went up there and it was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. <laughs> well, one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen because you're on this rooftop and you're like, okay, I get the entire Los Angeles skyline and I got all these wonderful people working with me and we're going to film the most intense and one of the best action scenes I'll be ever filming to this date. And wow, the view was just breathtaking. I could just sit there and stare at it all day, but of course I'm here to... We're here to work. We're here to finish principal photography, not Google the skyline. 
And I rented it for eight hours, which means that's how long we got. And yeah, we could take a lunch break, but everyone was okay with protein bars and water. And then we'll just have a good breakfast and dinner before and after. So we had like this nice cloud cover, which when we did all the dialogue up there, and before I got into all the fighting, then the cloud cover disappeared. And guess who forgot the sunblock? <laughs> Thankfully, uh, Blake did bring some block for us to use. I either forgot or was too stubborn to apply it on myself a second time, so I took some pretty bad sunburn in a little bit of areas. Um, and Mick got sunburn really bad too. Um, and it was intense. We filmed one of the hardest fights I've ever filmed to this day, and I'm very, very happy with the results. Like, I wish I could just show you some right now, but I Spoilers, I'm not going to. But I'll show you a little bit of behind the scenes stuff, you know. I love looking at that stuff too if I'm watching someone else's production updates on films. And we filmed that. And of course, when you're in Los Angeles, you have to pay for your parking. Yeah, the uh, the landlord, the, the, the building owner, the guy who let me rent out the roof, he's like, yeah, you can park on the street. But let's be honest, there's no street parking. And we got there at like... 11 because I had it from 11 to 7. So yeah, no, nah, no, nah, just no No street parking don't count on it <laughs> You're gonna pay to park no matter where you go and of course I parked Only about a half a mile away. It wasn't that far But we had to lug all the equipment all the way to the roof and then take it all the way to the rooftop and Then just to make it harder we were interrupted at least three times off my memory and only one had a right to interrupt us because she had the rooftop reserved as well. So it was kind of a double booking. But thankfully, I did get there first. I apologize. And if we were doing photography, I totally could have shared the roof with this lady because she was one of the nicest ladies I've ever talked to. But sadly, I did have to be selfish. We're on time and I got everybody there. and I'm not going to get a second chance to film this. So I'm like, hey, we're rolling sound. And just kind of have to take it up to uh, the double booking. Because in Los Angeles, films are made a whole lot and so many stuff gets canceled all the time. So I'm thinking they double book themselves in case one doesn't show up or cancels. Well, I didn't. <laughs> so that, um, either way, back to the topic. So we finished the roof. We had a good dinner. Then the next day we had to go do the warehouse. And yeah, I thought that was going to be easier. No, no, that was equally hard as the roof. Why? Because now you're even more tired. You're in a warehouse that feels like a hot box and you got to film more fighting scenes. Okay, I didn't have to do the fighting. Like I didn't have to like move my body in that way. But I still had to move the camera and do all the camera work. And while the other guys are now like the ones who didn't fight the day before are now fighting in the warehouse. And their fight scenes just as intense as ours was as ours was. If I could speak proper English, I'll let you know. <laughs> oh yeah, but we got that done in a reasonable amount of time too. We only took about six hours max per both shoots, shoot days, right? So we had the film day of one, uh, we're on the roof for six hours, and then inside the warehouse for another six hours. So I booked both spots for an extra two unnecessary hours. Uh, but it's better to have more time than less time. Uh, in my opinion. And we got everything we needed filmed there. We were dead exhausted after that. I decided to treat the entire crew to Indian cuisine. Because it was a nice little Indian restaurant just down the street of the hotel. I want something fancy for a change, not just uh, quick food that we can grab. And it was definitely a treat. One of the best experiences I've ever had in my entire life. <laughs> I'm with everybody who is just 100% into filmmaking, whether directing, acting, producing, writing, uh, cinematography. I have all these creative minds around this table with me that all came together to make the movie of my dreams a reality. And we got to just sit down and just relax. We didn't have to talk about filmmaking anymore if we didn't want to. We could just talk about anything. And that was a wonderful experience. One of which I like to do again. Maybe not so intense in the physical action department, but like, I want to do it again. With the same crew if I could. Because it was that much fun. Oh, you know what's great about that? We had to drive all the way back. Ta! <laughs> oh yeah, I had to drive my happy butt back. All the way from Los Angeles to Reno. 
And I don't know why that was harder. Oh, actually, I can think of why it was harder. I was exhausted. Um, so I've been going every single day, right? So now I'm about the, we're about a, nine days in and it's time to drive back. And thankfully getting out of LA is easier than getting into LA because don't have to deal about the traffic. We got up about four in the morning again, and then we beat Los Angeles traffic and just drove straight through. Took us only a half hour to get out of LA. We got a nice big breakfast again at another Denny's. <clears throat> I like Denny's in case you don't know. Um, anyways, we drove out and I had to fill up the gas tank a couple times. But it wasn't until I think the seventh hour of driving where my mind just was gone. Like, I got, my, I was so exhausted, I couldn't look at the road. Cars were playing tricks on me. And I probably went into some dehydration because I was chugging caffeine like crazy and not having enough water. And my brain just wanted to shut down. I needed a nap. But I was also getting a really bad headache. Thankfully, this is where having a crew in the car with me to switch off driving was very handy. So Mick took the wheel for the last hour. We drove back to uh, the place that I rent out at, my house basically. And we unpacked and settled down and all of us just kind of went and took a nap. <laughs> we were exhausted and we napped for a little bit. Um, I showered, got cleaned up, got some food in our bellies. And uh, this is kind of where the cast and crew kind of parted. Uh, Blake and Mick went back to their houses because we live in the same city and I had Nick and Gene on here to keep me entertained as we basically just kind of relaxed. Got some stuff for the Blu-ray, making up footage, and we just kind of kicked it until it was time to take both of these guys home. I did go through all the dailies um, almost every day. Yeah, we went through and checked out all the clips that we filmed and I took that knowledge and kept trying to make the next day even better and higher and higher quality that I can push. And yeah, now we are heavy into post-production. So I've been, since we got back from Los Angeles, I've been heavy into editing like crazy. And I went from having about a 39 minute rough cut for the second one that I put, cut together to an hour and 20 minutes. So about 80 minutes now. And I've still got a bunch of little things I gotta throw in there too. So I think the film is gonna be around 84 minutes long. I'm just a rough estimate from how it's cutting together so far. I do gotta film a post credit scene, um, which I can't tell you guys about, but I do want a scene to happen after the credits are done that I feel like would be extremely important would tie into this universe that I built. And if I ever do want to make another fail encounter for whatever reason, a four or five, which is kind of where my ideas for any sequels for this would cut off at, I have the opportunity to do that in the future. So having a post credit scene, yeah, kind of leaves an open ending, but at the same time for very good reason. And it's also good that you have an open ending because it gives you a little bit of closure as to what happened at the normal ending, which you'll find out later. <laughs> um, I've been the one heavy in the editing. I have different people to make the music, to do the visual effects, to do the color grading. And I'm working on the audio myself, which is a huge learning lesson for me, which I'm actually getting a lot better at it. I'm very happy with the results so far. And I'm probably only like 20% of the way in. <laughs> There's still a whole lot to do when it comes to audio. So thank you from the bottom of our hearts. The entire cast and crew wants to thank you for helping us get to this level of production. From all of our friends, family, followers, fans, no matter where you've come from, if you're watching this video to the end and you've been tracking our progress and wanting to see how things are coming together and why you eventually get your hands on this film in one way or the other, because of you, and your passion, ambition, and just your support overall is what is helping us move forward every day, every week. And for that, I thank you, and the entire cast and crew thanks you as well. And I want to say thank you to all my friends and family that are watching this. You guys know who you are. I can list all your names here, but you know who you are. There's too many of you guys to list. Thank you.
Thank you so much because 10, 11, how many years ago was it? 11 years ago when I started this in 2011, put my little camcorder video, like camera that I was making my little movies on to the production value that I've come to strive to to this day is huge and phenomenal. I wish I got to this production level sooner. It took me a long time to get here. And that was back when, you know, your phone camera did slightly better quality than your camcorder. And now it's just, you have so many options and tools to get your movie made, to get your film seen. There's a lot you can do today than you could 11, 12 years ago. At least for me, I was naive and I was learning. But it was my start. And because I started somewhere, I am here now talking in front of this camera to a pretty large audience. And I'm happy that you guys are with us for the entire journey. And my friends and family are the ones who really helped push me to get to where I'm at now. And because they kept pushing me this entire way, I got to live my dream a bit and continue living the dream, you know. <laughs> and I would... I want to take it back. I, I want to keep the dream going and make more dreams and memories with the right people, good and bad experiences alike. And I just want to keep, you know, making films. Just, I want to keep the big ones um, spaced out because <laughs> I think this was a good wake up call for me to realize how much work goes into making a feature length film at such a high production level. It is exhausting, and my work ethic for that does need to change a little bit if I'm going to continue doing this kind of stuff uh, for years to come. So until then, thank you all for being here again, and I'll see you guys next time in the next update video or any video that, of mine that you guys decide to watch. And yeah, stay safe, wash your hands, um, be careful wherever you go, keep pursuing those creative endeavors. I can't I remember my, my ending for this kind of stuff anymore. It's been a while. But anyways, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Take care. <laughs>